Chit in Somerset. Why are the government seeking to criminalise homelessness? How are people expected to pay fines of up to £2,500? Is this the cruelest act yet of a cruel government? Now, Conservative MPs in the more centrist One Nation group have warned the government that its criminal justice bill, intended to deal with nuisance rough sleeping, is very similar to the 200-year-old Vagrancy Act and will do nothing to actually tackle homelessness. Those rough sleeping uh, could indeed face fines of up to two and a half thousand pounds. Siobhan, let's come to you first. Well, maybe all of those One Nation Tories shouldn't have voted for all the austerity measures, shouldn't have voted for all the NIMBY measures, shouldn't have continually lent their votes to a party that was only ever in the interest of landlords and not into the homeless people, or when there was the welfare bill, all of these things like the housing benefit freeze. Maybe they shouldn't have done any of these things in terms of fiscal conservatism, and then get mad when the rest of their party who earnestly believe in these things continue down that ideological path. You know, maybe look in the mirror for one second one nation tories because you aren't you are not getting away scot-free with this by just pretending by you know, by talking about just how how upset you are with where these vagrancy actor like policies are coming from because you supported these fully in 2015 homelessness is one of the biggest things that i see at my advice surgery people evicted section 21 no fault evictions uh, in my case it's mainly families i see but it's desperate we are are building a generation of children and young people who aren't going to school who are, are know the um, kind of lack of security of not of having a proper home and we will rue the day quite apart from the terrible circumstances uh, that people are living we just simply need to build more houses in terms of the the, the question here um i mean i don't know the details of this but i mean it's finding someone two thousand five hundred pounds for rough sleeping seems to be a rather stupid thing to do when you know that no one can pay it well filling the courts which already have huge backlogs i mean they're probably never likely to get as far as the county court to get this fine. Um, let's go to Anna Firth. Yeah, well, I don't think that the government is seeking to bring uh, to uh, fine people who are homeless two thousand five hundred pounds. As, as you as you say, that that would be uh, ridiculous. Uh, what the government is trying to do uh, is deal with um, re repeated rough sleeping sort of outside businesses, where it's actually going to have a real um, you know impact on a thriving high street, and that that is something that we want to discourage. But but equally, of course, I mean, I had somebody in my constituency uh, surgery today. Um, uh, who had been uh, made homeless. Luckily, they've got the offer of, of another... Uh, oh, yeah, so we, we, we aren't being nasty to homeless people, just if they exist in public in my eyesight, right? We don't want to find them £2,500 for being homeless. We just want to find them for trying to live in the world in full view of the public. Another uh, flat. But but what we what we really want to do with people who are, who are on the streets is... Is, is get them off the streets and get them back on a path to becoming well, well, you know, a functioning member. Well, why not do it rather than find them? Well, because in some instance, well, as I say, I, I don't think that any court would impose any any sort of fine uh, like that unless it was a repeated pattern of deliberately sort of being... Yeah, I, I can't believe they would deliberately go to the places where people might have spare change for them, where there might be places where they might have shelter from the rain that happens very frequently in this country. Where else are they supposed to go? Again, they don't even have any solutions to this. No solutions whatsoever. Because, of course, the clear strategy that solves homelessness is building houses and putting people in the houses. Like, it's not difficult. A nuisance to uh, a, pre a premises that was actually suffering harm from it's that. It's very hard to imagine anybody in a rational mind sleeping on the street or making that as the choice. Often we see people um, sleeping rough who've got drug or alcohol problems. I mean, if you speak to Louise Casey, who mm. was um, Tony well, she Blair's homeless to, She forced me to sleep on the street one night to, yeah. do one, to raise do money. One of these, I mean, I always hate I these things. Well, and right. I, I mean, I'd raise quite a lot of money, but yeah. I tell Awful. you what... I Matthew Paris did it for a, for a week. He yeah. did. Yeah. He, well, I, I couldn't do it for a yeah. week. And I, it, it, it does make you... OK, I only did it for a day, but it made, really brought home to me how awful it must be. I did it once yeah. in a park in France. Did you really? Yes, because I couldn't find anywhere to sleep that night. It was a pretty uncomfortable bench. Were, were you fined two and a half thousand francs? No, I wasn't. But uh, I did have to get up very early to avoid this, the street sweepers. But, I mean, this is a problem in communities from biblical days. If you read the New Testament, you'll find stories of people who were... Uh, being well, weird, weird thing about that, Quentin. It has been a historical problem in loads of societies. Do you want to remind me what the homelessness rate was like in Cuba or in the Soviet Union? Like, do you want to, do you want to tell me just how many homeless people there were comparatively than there are over here? Have you looked at the countries in the world that have the lowest homelessness rates at the moment? None of them are like burgeoning free market 
libertarian, anarcho-capitalist utopias that the people on the right wing of this country imagine in their mind's eye. Basically tramps or lepers and uh, had no one to look after them. And uh, around the corner from the the place where I stay in London, there is a, um, a hostel for not quite the homeless, but for people with problems. And a lot of them will have fights uh, with the management and then get thrown out or uh, end up spending the night uh, out in the rough. And uh, it's they have a lot of problems, these people. They have... Men Again, they always like to try and say this. Well, the actual issue here is that they have problems and that means that they're going to be serial homeless people forever. When, of course, the homelessness usually comes first in these tough economic times and then the poor behaviour and the problems are then a consequence of the fact that they have been made homeless. But people like the Conservatives in this country because this man works for the Daily Mail, he is a conservative. They genuinely believe that people cannot be a victim of circumstance or of systemic problems, and they can only ever be problems created internally by things that they've done or choices that they've made. It's an incredibly myopic worldview and incredibly unmaterialist, as of course I am, and I encourage everybody else to be in their analysis of the economic circumstances that people get themselves into. It's almost like people might not have these problems. If instead of putting them in short term, hostile type accommodation, or homeless shelters, which don't ever solve the problem, but only are essentially a money sink. The actual money sinks for these issues are the courts for prosecutions, the police for policing the neighbourhoods, and the homeless shelters that don't provide permanent accommodation. These are all money sinks that do not solve the problem and only create cyclical homelessness. If you actually want to solve this crisis, you have to build houses and put people in the houses. This is the reason why Finland is the only country in Europe with a declining homelessness population because it has a housing first policy where if you are homeless, you don't get put to temporary accommodation, you get put in a house. I know this seems like a really radical policy of building houses and putting people in the houses. It's really not difficult. Problems, they have drink problems, drugs problems. And uh, it's, um, I think it's, it's the sort of problem that uh, politicians are never going to be able, for all the fine words, are never going to be able really to totally conquer. But that's exactly what I mean, that's a lie. That's just a lie. Again, it's been solved in housing first countries. It was solved in the communist countries. What happened when Louise Casey was a homelessness czar? She tackled the people with the greatest problems it first it. and it really improved mm. and it took people off street. But it requires constant attention, constant effort. Um, because but Siobhan, this, this, place, this place around the corner from where we live is a super hostel. It's a really, you know... It's... And again, we've had an entire discussion about this. We talk about all the problems they have. Oh, we're not criminalising this, we're only criminalising that. And at no point in any of this discussion have people talked about the housing crisis. We all talk about, well, how do we deal with the rough sleepers once they become rough sleepers? But not, how do we stop the rough sleepers existing in the first place? Which is, of course, a problem of the housing crisis, which we've not even discussed in this entire discussion. The fact that Siobhan McDonough kind of gestured towards it by saying that we need to build more housing, but we didn't talk about rents are how rents are too high. We didn't talk about how the lack of council housing and social housing. We've not talked about right to buy. We've not talked about the fact there aren't any rent controls. We've not talked about the fact that the homelessness situation that we've created cannot be solved with policing and shelters. None of these things have even been discussed. We're just talking about how these vagrants end up creating themselves and why there's such a problem for society. It's so dehumanising. God, I did, these people disgust me. They really do. It's a, it's a spot on place, but uh, the, the guys, all, all men uh, in this case, they just are incapable of um, of somehow complying to the discipline, complying with the discipline. And, you know, they are, they, they've got so many problems. I just don't know how... Well, you've got to, to tackle something. those first, haven't you? Because <laughs> lots of people won't go inside yeah. because it's they have those issues. It's not a shortage of money. Issues. Just, just to give I a think bit it is of a shortage no, of in, money. In this, in this case... I think it's a shortage of money. I think it's a it's shortage of, uh, um, uh, of, of the places where they're prepared to go. I think if you're trying to get off drink or drugs now, the amount of support compassion. you can get is very limited. A lot of people who sleep on our streets are actually ex-forces, yep. you know, yeah. who are having trouble getting back into normal There, there are a lot. And they even say, well, you know, there's uh, trouble accessing mental health care. There are problems accessing treatment for alcohol and drug addiction. First, first of all, because drugs are too criminalised, and second of all, because there's been austerity for 14 years where these services have been cut to the bone. But actually, when, when you look at the proportion, it's no different from any other mm. part of society, it turns out. Let me just put this into context, context before I come to you, Ali. Um, this is part of the government's criminal justice bill, and the Tory MP Nikki Aiken, she's MP for the City of mm. Westminster in London, is especially unhappy with it. She wrote recently that if the government doesn't change its plans around fining people who are rough sleeping, then she and other One Nation Tories will seek to table an amendment to remove the nuisance rough sleeping provisions entirely from the bill. She writes that imprisoning 
knowing or finding these individuals does not help get them off our streets. And I, I, I would suspect that the MP for the cities of London and Westminster probably knows what she's talking about more than anybody else on this issue. Ali? Yeah, this is, for me, really the cruelest form of politics. Because I don't know how any politician, and I, I tend to assume that everybody comes into politics to help people, and we just have different ways of going about it. I don't know how anybody walks past someone who's homeless and thinks of them as a nuisance. The, the idea that you're going to find them, not because they're homeless, but because they're a nuisance and they're homeless, and that, you know, you can sleep rough, just don't do it where I can see you, is ludicrous and cruel. I think... Well, let, know, let, I, let, I, let me I give an example by, as to where... Can I just say, but I, I walk past, I've grown up my whole life in this city, I love this city, I would never live anywhere else in my life. I walk past homeless people in huge high-story housing in London, where I know, according to research, shelter being one of them, that nearly half of these high-rises are empty, owned by conglomerates and billionaires from, from abroad. And we've got rough people sleeping at the base of them in, in desperate conditions in the cold. And we've got flat, tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of flats in this city that are empty. And our response to that isn't compassion, isn't to reach out an arm and to say, how can we help these people? If there is a drug problem, how can we help them? If my, my mom was made homeless and she was disabled, how can we help these people? It's to say, we're going to find them because I see you. It's just, who with a heart does that? Who gets into politics to do that? I don't... Conservatives do. That's this conservatism. That's what conservatism does to people. These people are just, they just have empty sacks of coal where their hearts and minds should be. I'm sorry, it's just how conservatism teaches people to think of these people. It's, it's horrendous. It's, it's psychotic. You have to have a permanent part of your soul removed to be able to do this. And he's right, there's loads of empty luxury flats owned by Russian oligarchs. Sadiq Khan, of all things, has said that we should be requisitioning these luxury flats owned by Russian oligarchs and use and I would use them for social housing, yeah, based. We're not using them. They're not providing any societal utility. F it. it. The interests of everybody in a community. And of course we want to help homeless people off the streets. We want to get them uh, back into halfway houses. We want to get them gradually back into training and, and hopefully back into being a functioning, contributing member of society. But equally, we have to balance the interests of the people who are who are trying to make a living uh, running their, their shop or their business. In the end, I don't know what proportion of homeless people have mental health issues, but I suspect it's quite a mm. high proportion. And I mean, during COVID, when effectively Effectively, the, the homelessness issue was solved because there were places for people to go. It was only those who were really suffering from bad mental health issues that just refused to be helped. And there will always be people well, if the political who will refuse is there, to be helped. Well, that's clear, isn't it? If the political will is there, we can do something. Yeah, well, we cannot good. just throw our hands up and say we can't do anything. That's not a way to do politics. When the political will is there and when there's a crisis point, it shows us that we can do something. <clears throat> but what this is, is just honestly the cruelest form of politics that says out of sight, out of mind, okay. get out of the way of the shops, go sleep in a park if you will and just don't cause a problem for me and that's the homelessness situation dealt with i just cannot understand well keep your calls coming absolutely knocked out of the park alex you're right if the political will was there during covid we're gonna have the political will anytime you had a housing first policy all of these things would go away they say oh well we can't have people intervening with people's businesses that they work so hard for and i'm like okay then deal with like patient zero the root cause of these problems which is the capitalization of our housing assets, the marketization of housing, and your failure to provide adequate funding for mental health care and rehabilitation programs that should be a cornerstone of our anti-homelessness strategy along with a housing first policy. But you don't do either. Is it any wonder that our homeless population has skyrocketed? Exactly. Jerry Corbyn, cruel man that he was, wanted to end homelessness indefinitely. I mean, private Labour Party policy is to keep right to buy. And siphon off even more of our social housing stock. It's ridiculous. Hey there, if you enjoyed the video, make sure that you like and leave a comment that helps the video out in the algorithm. If you subscribe and ring the bell, it'll let you know when I go live. I stream every day on YouTube and Twitch. You can also follow all of my socials down in the description. And if you want to support me in a more financial manner, there's a join button for memberships. It's just 99p to be a member on YouTube, as well as a patron. And there's some merch there as well. And hopefully I'll catch you on the next video. Take care.